Right, so like I was just mentioning, um, we're just going to select all the edges that go around the nostril area, like so. Then go on the scale tool, and we can actually hold shift and scale in with the middle triangle. So you may want to do that in the perspective view, like so. Hold shift and then just scale in and you can see how we're kind of adding edges from every um, angle I guess, it's all coming in together and that's exactly what you want to do and then you can kind of just line this up so it follows that shape within the nose like that if you want to you don't have to do that, you don't have to do that at all um, but you know, if you want to be uber accurate and make it look as good as possible and all that kind of stuff, then you can do that. I'm not going to be kind of as precise as that. Um, I'm just going to kind of do it like that. I think that looks okay. I'm going to then just drag this up slightly and then I'm going to shift and drag the nostril up so it's within the nose and then just scale down the top of the nostril like that so that gives it some depth and of course let's just go ahead and add a smoothing group so um, we can kind of see what it's looking like Deselect all the other smoothing groups and just click on number one. And that's there we have our nose. I think that looks okay. Um, you may want to tweak it from the side profile because it looks a little bit too curved as it approaches the tip, whereas it has is a lot straighter. I think that looks quite good. I think that's looking quite good. And from the front as well, if you look in our reference image, it's a really narrow nose. Um, and I think we've captured that quite well. We'll only be able to see once we kind of get further on in the modeling process and be able to kind of play around a little more with the verts and stuff. But I think I'm happy with that at the moment. I'm just going to kind of tweak it a little bit from the side profile. Like so. That's looking better. I actually just want to angle these two up because you know the way her nose is is it's kind of angled up like that from the front. It's um, if you have a look here, can you see how the shading kind of hits on those two areas just there so that's what I'm trying to kind of recreate there so you know you can kind of see how the angle is up slightly anyway so let's kind of move on to the lips now um, like I was saying in the, in the kind of previous videos that we're trying to create um, a nice area where the lips can uh, have smoothing, um, have nice flow lines around them. So, I'm just going to go in my front view, excuse me, I'm a bit tired, uh, and I'm just going to kind of shift and drag this across. In fact, I'm just going to move this out slightly. Uh, then I'm going to shift and drag this down like this, then shift and drag that like that. So I'm just changing the angle slightly so it's not so, um, you know, it's not looking so kind of um, angled. We kind of always want to ensure that we're kind of smoothing it off a little, you know, as much as possible as much as we possibly can and again I'll probably need to put in a few edges here later uh, but for now you know, I don't need to worry so much about that 
so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bridge this gap between this uh, between these two edges so I'm going to select the two edges click onto bridge so I've just closed that shape off just there it gives me a better idea of what you know this this uh, cheek is looking like Okay, let's just see what, what happens as we go forward. Um, I can see that I've got a bit of an issue uh, because of the angle of the lips, but you know, I'm going to kind of trust what I'm doing and just, you know, hope for the best. I'm going to select this one just here and I'm going to shift and drag. And what I essentially want to do is I kind of want to match up where the edges are on the top lip and the bottom lip. I find that kind of works best. So as you're going around, you just want to change the angle like this as well. Then a smaller kind of part just here. Then a smaller part. And then a smaller part again. And just until they overlap very slightly in the um, top corner like so. And then move the middle vertice across so it overlaps and then like I've mentioned before you just want to change the angle slightly so it's kind of gradually going into a vertical line and then of course you know look in our side view it's not lined up at all I could have possibly done it as I went along but you know I chose to kind of do it in a do it all in one go so again we're just going to kind of pull this forward to here and then just grab the next edge and let's pull that forward to about there and then the next edge so we're just pulling it forward until it lines up with the lip and that will kind of give us a good indication that it's in the right place Just trying to tweak this a little bit just so it looks a little better. That curve kind of looks a little better. Okay, so that's looking okay. Kind of got the shape there. It does look like our mouth is open, but it's only because the lips aren't in place yet. Um, so don't worry if it looks a little wrong. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this poly that I created earlier, you know, and I bridged the gap because um, this edge needs to kind of follow around around this as well. So we're going to have kind of two loops around the mouth. And the reason for that is, is so when we animate, you know, that's the whole reason that we're doing these um, uh, loops around the uh, mouth because without them when we animate it would be distorted so these rings kind of help to keep the animation uh, really smooth so that so there's li less distortion uh, on the face so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to kind of go around here and you know you'll see in my next video what I mean you know I'll just create this area around the lip um, and then in the next video I'll kind of show you how to create the actual lips